Welcome to Enter the Unknown, your one-stop shop for answers to questions that you were never bored enough to ask. My name is FJ, and today I'm trying to figure out if you can beat Pokemon Emerald using the worst diverse team possible. Let me explain. I wanted to do a different kind of challenge to keep things from becoming stale. I decided a challenge involving a whole team of the weakest fully evolved Pokemon could be simultaneously fun and challenging. When I play through Pokemon games properly, I almost never finish the game with Pokemon yet to evolve, and my goal with this challenge was to create a proper team. With that in mind, I also didn't want a team with mostly normal types, so settled on picking 6 Pokemon with different typings. Aside from Wishiwashi solo form, the next 10 weakest fully evolved Pokemon by base stats come from the first 3 generations, so Emerald just made the most sense as far as the game goes. With all of that in mind, our team was chosen. Shedinja, Smeargul, Delibird, Love Disk, Unknown, and Mawile. The reason for taking Mawile instead of Sableye, who both have a base stat total of 380, was simple. It was so my first rule would be possible. No HM slaves. The six Pokemon mentioned are the only team members I'm allowed. Secondly, you know this one by now, no items can be used in battle. That's just a necessary rule in every challenge. Finally, to keep this challenge challenging, none of our team members can be higher level than the highest level Pokemon of the next gym leader or elite 4 member. With a team of 6 I needed that to keep it sort of interesting. I made a quick edit so Delibird would be one of the starters, and I made it a little patch of grass in Little Root so that I could catch the other 5 Pokemon. With that, we're ready to go. Our team for this challenge is going to be made up of Eccles the Unknown, Elmer the Smeargul, Jaws the Mawile, Amaranth the Love Disk, Halo the Shedinja, and our previously seen starter, Wings the Delibird. Before we take on any trainers though, we have an all too familiar task. It's time to find out the type of Eccles' hidden power. A super effective hit on Love Disk quickly narrows it down to just two options, it must be Grass or Electric. When Mawile doesn't resist, we have our answer. Unknown's hidden power is electric type. Nothing much happens between Lilliroot and Rustboro, but we use a double battle outside Rusturf Tunnel as an opportunity to sketch a move for Elmer. We sketch hidden power and it turns out to be flying type. While grinding up to take on the Rustboro City Gym Leader, I ran into a spiky metapod in Pesselberg Woods. That makes it two shinies in four challenges. I'm not entirely sure how this keeps happening, but I'm not against it. With our training out of the way, it's time to take on Roxanne. Just based on typings and movesets, we're basically completely reliant on Amaranth here. She one-shots both of Roxanne's Geodudes, but Nosepass actually poses a serious challenge. As a rock type instead of a rock ground type, I knew it would take quite a few hits to take down Nosepass, so I decided to use Charm to bottom out her attack. Unfortunately, after one water gun starts chipping away, Nosepass lands a crit rock tomb almost knocking out Love Disk. Even though she's holding an Orenberry and Roxanne uses two potions, Amaranth somehow manages to pull out the victory with just two HP remaining. I have no idea how we won that battle, but in doing so, we've earned our first gym badge. We then have an optional battle with May and Rustboro, and we take her out easily before sailing to Jewford Town. Once there, we rock up to Stephen Stone in Granite Cave, and boldly go where no man has gone before. Okay, that last bit didn't work. In a gravelly voice, he thanks us and gives us the TM for... Steelwing? Seriously? A million moves with rock and stone related names and... Whatever. Jaws can't learn it anyway because for some reason, Mowile can't learn any steel type moves in 3rd gen. After quickly running out of rock puns, we head to the Jew for Jim to take on Brawly. His team only has fighting type attacking moves, so he can't touch Shedinja. Knowing this, I went in super underleveled, which wasn't a great idea. With Brawly's healing items, it takes a lot of time for Halo to take out Machop and Metatype. It takes so long, in fact, that we run out of PP against Makuhita after he's used bulk up six times. Uh oh. Six sand attacks do enough to stop him from sweeping our whole team though, and Amaranth is on hand to finish the job and earn us badge number two. In Slateport, we continue our courier work and are rewarded with TM46 Thief. Unlike Steelwing, we can make use of this one as Wings needs a move desperately. Even though Present has a chance of being as powerful as Fire Blast, Blizzard, or Thunder, it also has a 1 in 5 chance of healing the opponent, 
The most likely outcome of present is a 40 base power attack, so we may as well use Thief which probably won't start healing our opponents. Then we rid the town of Team Aqua and move on with our lives. Just outside Slateport we run into a Minin and use Elmer's second sketch to learn Thunder Wave. Then it's time to take on May. When you're using this team, a lot of the time you've got to accept that sacrifices will be necessary. Not against a Wingull though. Eccles fries her up all crispy and then chips away over half of Lombre's health. Wings finishes the job and then almost everyone needs to chip in against Combuscan. Elmer paralyzes May starter before getting obliterated by double kick. Then Halo spends a minute throwing sand in his eyes while avoiding blind pecks in a very Forks versus the Basilisk style fight. Eventually one lands and Shedinja faints before Wings attempts to heal Combuscan up. Twice. Great teamwork, Wings. At least Delibird does contribute a small bit before being cremated. The setup is complete. Now it's time to send in the heavy hitter, this adorable love heart shaped fish. Amaranth does get hit by double kick, but stays strong to finish the battle. The worst of first team may not be strong and they may not be popular, but god damn it, they're one hell of a team. In Morville, we encounter Wally who's doing his own challenge video called Can You Beat Pokemon Emerald Using Only a Ralts? His uncle is trying to tell him that he needs to EV train and level up before Watson, but he won't listen. He challenges us instead, but his Ralts is taken down easily by Elmer and Jaws. You can buy the TM for Ice Beam in Morville Game Corner, and using the 20 free coins it shouldn't be hard to accrue the 4000 coins required. It doesn't start perfectly, but a few wins get us back on track. Honestly, this is pretty e easy. I, I didn't want Ice Beam anyway. Before attempting to take on Watson, we sketched Charm from Ilumise while grinding everyone up to level 24. Our first run at Watson was okay, but Magneton is causing a lot of problems. We only have a few moves that it doesn't resist, and Halo isn't as effective because Magneton has Supersonic. Confusion is a serious issue for Shedinja, who only has 1 HP. I don't want to ever have to say serious issue for Shedinja again because that was impossible. Without Halo available against Mainectric, Watson was able to finish us off without too much trouble. Now our second attempt. Voltorb has rollout and Shedinja can't do much so Mawile and Love Disk take charge. Electrike can't touch Halo though, but his ability static does paralyze us before he goes down. The strategy on our second run is to paralyze Magneton and then use Sand Attack six times to stop Supersonic from hitting. Eventually Magneton goes down and Mainectric is powerless to stop Halo. This was incredibly tough, but we've officially earned our third gym badge. I forgot to swap Jaws to the front of the party before taking on Maxi, which made the battle at Mount Chimney a lot harder than it needed to be. Eccles took out Mightyena and Zubat though, before Amaranth eliminated Camerupt with a couple of water guns. It was pretty easy in the end, and a good precursor to our battle with Flannery. Our battle with the Lava Ridge Town Gym Leader doesn't exactly go to plan. I didn't have much of a strategy in place beyond using Amaranth, so even though we got to our final Pokemon Torkoal, the battle ended with Wings healing her to full health before being incinerated. Great work again, Wings. After a small bit of grinding, we give it another go. Love Disk makes quick work of Nummel even after Roxanne uses a Hyper Potion. Wanting to avoid unnecessary damage for Amaranth, I let Eccles take down Slugma. Camera up Sunny Day in combination with another Hyper Potion keeps her up long enough to take out Amaranth. I then miscalculated, thinking Secret Power would do enough to finish off Camerupt, and lost Halo as a result. Jaws ends up taking out Camerupt, and Elmer paralyzes Torkoal. Eccles and Wings do enough damage to allow Jaws to be the last man standing. Although it was close, we've picked up our fourth gym badge. Next up was Norman, and the strategy was simple. Halo is in charge of Spinda and Linoon, only having to avoid confusion. Jaws is there to deal with Vigoroth, who only has normal and dark type attacks. The plan for taking down Slacking was to paralyze him with Thunder Wave and then spam Charm. Unfortunately, the 300 pound ape is faster than Elmer, a Pokemon whose best attribute by far is speed. Good work, buddy. Luckily, Amaranth has Charm and Attract, and she does enough so that Eccles can finish Slacking off. With that, Halo can complete the job against Spinda and Linoon. This was another battle that required a lot of teamwork and strategy, and is part of what made this challenge so interesting. That's five gyms down, and three to go. After ruining our dad's day, we surf past Juford and find ourselves aboard an abandoned ship. Inside a storage room on the weirdly popular vessel, we find the TM for Ice Beam. See? Who needs the game corner? Slots are dumb anyway. We teach the TM to wings, and finally, our deli bird is ready to ice some enemies. After making light work of Team Aqua at the Weather Institute, we take on May just outside Fortree. We ended up taking out her whole team without taking a single point of damage. 
that's pretty embarrassing for her. With that, we're ready to take on Winona. The Four Tree Gym Leader might be the easiest challenge so far. As a flying type trainer, her team sets up perfectly for us. With Echo's electric type hidden power and Wings' ice beam, we have super effective moves on Swablu and Skarmory, and quad effective attacks on Pelipper, Tropius, and Altaria. Unknown takes care of Swablu, and Delibird one shots Tropius before Skarmory causes some minor problems. After surviving on 1 HP, she takes Eccles down to 3 HP and is then healed by Winona. Luckily, she goes for Steel Wing instead of Aerial Ace and misses, allowing 3 hidden powers in a row. With Skarmory down, we can one shot Winona's last two Pokemon and earn our 6th gym badge. Once we reach Lily Cove, we have access to the move deleter and can finally get rid of Rock Smash and Cut. In an update to our movesets, we teach Sludge Bomb to Jaws, Dig to Halo, and Aerial Ace to Wings. Our next important battle is against Team Magma leader Maxi. We're a bit under level to take on his Mighty Yenna, Crobat, and Camerupt, but the battle still isn't too difficult. Wings is able to take down Crobat before Amaranth takes out Camerupt. Mighty Yenna takes a bit more time to knock out, but with Elmer, Amaranth, and Jaws working together, anything is possible. Well, maybe not anything. Like five or ten things are possible. One of those things happens to be taking out a Mighty Yenna. With Maxi down, we can return to Lily Cove for another optional battle with Mei. Not for the first time, the battle wasn't particularly difficult, and neither were Team Aqua. We tangled with them inside their hideout outside Lily Cove, but once again, Archie wasn't there. Before taking on Tate and Liza, we replaced Smeargle's hidden power with Sketch, and learned Dragon Rage from a Gyarados. At this point, a guaranteed 40 hit points of damage is probably better than anything Elmer can do. For the Moss Deep Gym battle with Tate and Liza, we got the whole team up to level 42. Now that Shedinja has learned Shadow Ball, it will be key to taking down the Psychic type gym leaders. I had to do a lot of test runs to determine the best strategy for this battle, and ultimately settled on focusing all our attacks on Claydol and then Solrock. Zatu and Lunatone's only way of targeting Halo is Confusory, so if we can isolate that pairing, we should be good. Starting out with Smeargle and Love Disk, we can quickly cut down Claydol's attack before he starts using Earthquake. We're able to bottom out its attack and do some damage before Elmer is knocked out, but Wings and Amaranth finish the job. We lose both while battling Solrock, but once Jaws and Eccles take down the Sun Pokemon, we're back in control. Eventually, we're able to eliminate Zatu and Lunatone with Jaws and Halo at full health. Well, I mean Halo is also at 1 HP, but you get the point. Our toughest challenge yet is complete, and we're up to 7 badges. We explore the sea and find the seafloor cavern. Inside, we locate Archie and Kyogre, and decide to battle the former. Like Maxi before him, Archie has a team of three with a Mighty Anna and a Crobat. The only noticeable difference is his replacement of Camerupt with Sharpedo. It's another easy battle, and at this point, the worst of his team is pretty much unbeatable. I think we can all agree that they've earned the right to watch a nice animation of the Weather Trio doing their thing. They definitely need to have a nice relaxing break before facing Wan. Welcome to Hell. Juan has 5 Pokemon, and 4 of them aren't any issue. This should not be this hard. It may look like Love Disk, Whiskash, Celio, and Crawdont gave me some problems, but honestly, you're joining me like 2 hours into recording this battle, and I wasn't really paying any attention at this point. You see, the only Pokemon that matter here are Shedinja and Kingdra. My other Pokemon cannot deal with him no matter what. Now while Kingdra cannot damage Halo, his moveset includes Double Team and Rest. It takes 3 Shadow Balls to take him down, but once his evasion is maxed out and he's spamming Rest, it all comes down to luck. I do have Confuse Ray, so if I can land one, then I have another chance to deal damage. After so many attempts that I lost count, we finally get lucky and Wands Kingdra hits itself in Confusion 3 times in a row. At the same time, Halo lands 2 out of 3 Shadow Balls, and that's enough to win we have somehow earned our 8th gym badge. After some counselling, we return to the game with a nice easy battle against Wally. At this point, he's thrown in the towel on his Ralts only challenge, evolved him into Gardevoir and caught Altaria, Magneton, Delcati, and Roselia. As I said though, this is an easy battle. It doesn't seem like it would be, but the worst of team is truly unstoppable. We made it past one, we can do anything. We take down Wally without taking a single point of damage. The rest of Victory Road goes off without a hitch. Well, except for that god-awful double battle with the slackings. That was, that was pretty hitchy. 
With that out of the way, it's almost time to take on the Elite Four. There is a small problem here, though. Sydney is the first member of the Elite Four, with his highest level Pokemon being his Absol at level 49. That means I cannot have anyone above that level when I take him on. As the levels increase throughout the challenge, my team is going to become more and more underleveled. Our best option is to get our whole team within a few experience points of level 50 before starting. I did this while EV training everyone up in the stat that I felt was most important. With that out of the way, it's time to take on Sydney. Our movesets going into the Elite Four look like this. Mawile has Strength, Fake Tears, Toxic, and Sludge Bomb. Shedinja has Hyper Beam, Shadow Ball, Confuse Ray, and Dig. Unknown has, well, just Hidden Power. Delibird has Ice Beam, Return, Aerial Ace, and Fly. Love Disk has Surf, Charm, Attract, and Blizzard. And Smeargle has Dragon Rage, Thunder Wave, Charm, and Double Team. Okay, let's go. Sydney is a Dark type trainer who has five Pokemon ranging from level 46 to level 49. His Crawdont is a non-issue as it can't touch Shedinja, but we need a strategy for his other four. We lead off with Jaws, whose Hypercutter ability nullifies Mighty Anna's Intimidate. With only Double Edge and Crunch's attacks, we can use Toxic and Fake Tears to set up for Love Disk to take him down. Even with a full restore, Amaranth can one-shot him with Surf. Cacturn can't do anything before being annihilated by Delibird's Ice Beam. Absol requires some teamwork though. We have to paralyze him with Thunder Wave and then lower his attack with Charm before using Attraction Surf to defeat him. Like Cacturn, Shiftry is wiped out by Wings, leaving just Crawdon. With no possible attacks, Shedinja is easily able to finish off Sydney and move us on to the second member of the Elite Four. The Ghost type trainer Phoebe is up next, and she also has five Pokemon two Dusclops, two Bayonets, and a Sableye. Halo is a powerful Pokemon to have here thanks to Shadow Ball, but I can only use it when I know it'll be able to take down its opponent in one. All of Phoebe's Pokemon have attacks that can knock out Shedinja, so all of the worst diverse team needs to play a part. Amaranth starts off against Dusclops, but some bad luck with Confusion means we lose Love Disk early. Halo is able to finish off Phoebe's first Dusclops before she sends out Bayonet. Jaws poisons Bayonet and Dusclops with Toxic before being knocked out, and Eccles goes down two after landing one hidden power. Wings finishes off her second Dusclops with Ice Beam, and then Elmer paralyzes her second Bayonet before fainting too. To end the battle though, Halo and Wings are able to knock out Phoebe's last three Pokemon without taking any damage. With that out of the way, we can move on to the third member of the Elite Four. Glacia's team is made up of two Celios, two Glalies, and a Wolverine. Although neither of her Celios have attacks that can harm Shedinja, they both have Hail which can knock him out in one turn. Both of her Glalies have super effective moves on Halo, so it can only really be utilized against Wolverine. Eccles wipes out her first Celio with the help of a critical hit, and then Elmer and Jaws team up to knock off Glalie number one. Jules does more good work against her second Glalie, lowering her special defense and allowing Amaranth to take her out. The second Celio is weakened by Eccles before Halo finishes her off. With no hail on the field and only Walrein left, Shedinja can finish off the battle without worrying. The worst diverse team is ripping through the Elite Four with ease. On to number four. Another luck dependent battle now. Only two of Drake's dragons are actually problematic and surprisingly, Kingdra isn't one of them. Flygon and Salamence are the difficult ones to deal with. I need a high roll on Blizzard to take down Flygon in one hit, and then need Elmer to survive a hit from Salamence so I can use Thunder Wave. If that happens, Delibird can wipe out the dragon before getting one-shotted. You're watching the attempt where everything finally went right. Drake's first Pokemon, Shelgon, just wastes some time before going down to Amaranth, and then Wings wipes out Altaria. Honestly, Delibird is a beast. You know about the rest already. A blizzard knocks out Flygon, an Ice Beam ends Salamence, and thankfully, Kingdra doesn't have rest. A crit Shadow Ball speeds up the process, and the Elite Four are finally defeated. Unfortunately, we still have to take on the champion. The former Sutopolis City Gym Leader Wallace serves as champion in Pokemon Emerald. I almost gave up on this battle. On the surface, it seems like it could be simple. 
None of his six Pokemon have a super effective move to use on Shedinja, so this should be easy. Unfortunately, Tentacruel and Milotic have Toxic, and Ludicolo has Leech Seed, both moves that wipe out Halo. The other three Pokemon, Waylord, Whiskash, and Gyarados, really can't touch Shedinja though, so this is essentially a 6 on 3. Now for the issues. The worst of our team are not on par as far as levels go. Our highest leveled Pokemon is 3 levels below Wallace's worst Pokemon. On top of that, all 3 of the Pokemon we have to face properly can one shot our whole team. Basically, we have to rely on Double Team, Thunder Wave, Confuse Ray, and the purported luck of the Irish. This battle took more hours than I'd care to admit, but eventually I got lucky and made it to my low tick. Plan A was to use Toxic with Jaws and then stall him until the end. I was hoping Wallace was out of full restores at this point, but apparently not. We eventually make it to Plan B. Hope Halo can somehow win. We've got a Petra Berry to save us from one Toxic, and use Confuse Ray as it's our only real chance of winning. From there, we need Milotic to hit itself in confusion twice in a row, anything else will result in a loss. Somehow, Milotic feels sorry for us and lets us win. The worst of our team are officially champions of Hoenn, they have beaten Pokemon Emerald. I know we didn't beat Steven Stone in this video, but that is technically post-game. If enough people are interested, I will invest the many hours required to train everyone up to level 78 and see what the worst of our team are truly made of. For now though, I rolled the credits and that's good enough for me. We managed to take on the champion with a significant level disadvantage and win. No items, no HM slaves, no overleveled Pokemon. This was something different for a challenge, but it definitely was challenging. I hope I was able to prove to you just how good this team can be. They all brought something different, but we needed all of them at various points. Seeing this team of gimmick Pokemon inducted into the Hall of Fame honestly made me really happy. I really really like most of these Pokemon, so using them as a team was honestly quite fun. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.